Cyberpsychosis is one of the most personally terrifying concepts I've ever seen in anime. The idea of someone losing themselves and being thrown into a bloody rage, endangering the people closest to them is a nightmarish thought. We've been told that cyberpsychosis is caused by the increased use of cyberware, but is this actually the truth? After extensive research, I've compiled the most prevalent theories surrounding cyberpsychosis and the major implications they have. My goal in this short video is to change your perception and present my case that cyberpsychosis is not what it seems. No more running for me, dog. Reaper's finally calling my name. What is cyberpsychosis? The cyberpunk wiki states that it's a mental illness, specifically a dissociative disorder, caused by an overload of cybernetic augmentations to the body. That's in line with what we're told both in the anime and the video game. Cyberpsychosis plays off a person's pre-existing psychological tendencies, which are enhanced by cyberware. This causes them to lose their sense of identity and therefore personality. It's common that cyberpsychos view other people as weak and inferior to themselves. This often results in a berserk frenzy of violence from someone who is highly equipped and capable of large amounts of damage. Cyberpsychosis is an invisible disease that reaps violence and destruction. The wiki states that the less empathetic or psychologically stable a person is, the more susceptible they are to it. We know cyberpsychosis doesn't affect as many women as it does men, which speaks to people's innate dispositions to get it. In the original cyberpunk tabletop RPG, there's a stat known as humanity. Mike Pondsmith described this as a person's sense of empathy and ability to rebound from stressors. This stat, along with having a supportive environment, determines a person's susceptibility to cyberpsychosis. Having a relatively secure life and loving people around you serves as a buffer to the repercussions of the condition. People who come to view themselves as monsters are much more likely to go insane, while those who retain their personality are much less likely to. David had an incredibly high humanity stat, described by creators as being one in a million. He also had a really loving mother and a somewhat set life path. Even when losing his mom and his academic career, he was able to find a mentor slash father figure, a group he could identify with, and fell in love with a baddie. Hmm, do I know you? No, I... Not really, I don't think so. <laughs> There's no known cure for cyberpsychosis, though some questionable treatment methods exist. Symptoms include distancing yourself from others, losing touch with reality, hallucinating, being easily irritated, and of course, violence. With less emphasis on violence, these descriptions are almost identical to actual psychosis in real life, which can be caused by traumatic experiences, substance abuse, medication side effects, and more. Could it be the term cyberpsychosis was created for some ulterior motive? I've gathered several pieces of evidence that cyberpsychosis is different from what we've been told. These should have you questioning what you know about cyberpsychosis so far. A. All MaxTac soldiers are canonically cyberpsychos. It's been confirmed through data shards that all MaxTac soldiers are former cyberpsychos. If MaxTac quote unquote recruits cyberpsychos, then it can't be a permanent condition, unless the victims are forcibly controlled throughout the ongoing state of cyberpsychosis. Either cyberpsychosis is being cured, or some major mass brainwashing is taking place. Either way, the idea of cyberpsychosis being a permanent condition is probably a lie. What else could this mean? B. Sasha can trigger cyberpsychosis. In the music video for Let You Down, the ending theme of Edge Runners, we get a prequel to the events of the show. There's a brief moment where we see Sasha quick hacking cyberpsychosis onto a robot. This easily missed nugget of information could have some major implications. This proves that the increased use of cyberware isn't the only way to get it. What if at least some of the cyberpsycho incidents are caused by someone behind the scenes? C. What about Adam Smasher? Is he immune? It could be that Adam Sandler is an engram, making him immune to cyberpsychosis. This would explain Arasaka's trust in such a wild card character if they can just have some form of kill switch and replace him over and over again. The more likely explanation is that Adam Sandler is what Mike Pondsmith identified as a high functioning cyberpsycho. How does this work though? Does Adam Smasher have a higher mental bandwidth? Is he so violent and sadistic that the cyberware has no added effects? If so, couldn't a corporation use his genes or mental profile to get rid of cyberpsychosis once and for all? Is there anything to gain from not getting rid of cyberpsychos? D. Maelstrom should be prime victims. Maelstrom is a gang in the cyberpunk universe that values machine over man, customizing their bodies beyond recognition. They're some of the most visibly chromed out individuals we see. Shouldn't all or the majority of the Maelstrom gang have succumbed to cyberpsychosis? For some reason, I doubt they have a loving and secure environment to act as a buffer, but I could be wrong. Instead of a brain overload from chipping too much cyberware, could it also be that cyberpsychosis is someone's body rejecting the cyberware? Maybe the Maelstrom gang members have some genes that merge better with chrome. I'm built different. I just know it. E. 
How does V resist cyberpsychosis? A prevailing answer to this question is that V is sharing the toll of cyberware with Johnny Silverhands. Since he's already a psychotic killer, it could be that this is the Adam Smasher effect, where it simply doesn't affect him since he's already violent. Having two minds in one potentially increases the resistance to cyberpsychosis. Others theorize V resists cyberpsychosis because we're controlling him as the player. I like the idea of breaking the fourth wall here. Maybe we're the ones helping V overcome cyberpsychosis. So what could this mean? There are a number of fan theories surrounding this subject. Here's a breakdown of the most popular theories surrounding cyberpsychosis. Number 1. Someone is controlling cyberpsychos. Sasha's ability to quick hack cyberpsychosis makes it very believable that someone is behind these incidents. Maybe Chuck Norris, Maine, and David, along with the many other cyberpsychos we hear about, were set up for some purpose we haven't confirmed yet. What could it be and what could someone gain out of controlling cyberpsychos? Could MaxTac be doing this to gain more soldiers? Or could someone be trying to shed light on the darkness of Night City? I'm not super knowledgeable on the Blue Eyes group or the Reptilian conspiracy conspiracies in Cyberpunk 2077, but that would be super helpful in the comments below. Number 2. Rogue AIs are controlling cyberpsychos. While Mike Pondsmith doesn't seem to be a big fan of this theory, it does seem plausible. We know the old net is plagued with violent rogue AIs. What if people are being corrupted on a local level via the net? The idea that hostile digital entities are behind something as violent and unpredictable as cyberpsychosis could very well be the case. It would explain the erratic and unpredictable nature of cyberpsychos. Number 3. Cyberware has the will to survive. Since we know cyberpsychosis is highly dependent on someone's willingness to live, maybe the technology has become so advanced it tries to preserve itself. Once a person loses their desire to continue living, they become a danger to themselves and the cyberware. What if the cyberware forces the person to fight off all immediate danger in a desperate hope to keep itself alive? This is similar to how an invasive parasite might function. And what happened to Kiwi? <laughs> Number 4. Cyberware is just a booster. Sort of like money, cyberware doesn't necessarily make us good, bad, or even different. It just exaggerates what was already there. It makes us more capable, simply furthering who we already were before when no actual change within us occurred. This theory is much more philosophical but it has some degree of credibility. Number 5. Cyberpsychosis is a lie. This theory states that corporations and governments coined the term in order to cover up the shrewd and horrible practices that go on in Night City. If you notice, the description we're given places the blame on the individual person rather than the living environment of Night City or the actual products made. This would be really convenient and serve as a cover-up. Coining the term cyberpsychosis could have been a conspiracy to divert attention away from corrupt business and government practices. I'm afraid that's impossible at this stage. Number 6. The products are designed to fail. This theory states that enhancements were designed to fail from the beginning, requiring customers to constantly buy more upgrades to avoid failure. This creates a horrible but very profitable loop where people are forced to become lifetime customers and those who can't afford the upgrade simply deal with product failure, which in this case could be a blind psychotic rage that ends with a group of previous cyberpsychos known as MaxTac putting them down. Did any of this change your perspective on cyberpsychosis? Which of these theories are you most closely leaning towards? Share this video with our fellow chooms, consider donating to support the channel, and check out some more of these in-depth Edgerunners videos.